with the grab. Came back to get it, and that's the first down. Tannehill in zone, touchdown Tennessee. Ferkser was open. All right, everyone, welcome back into another episode of Tape with a Titan. Today, we're going to be breaking down some plays with Anthony Ferkser, tight end, fan favorite of the Titans. We're going to start off here with a play from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. Third and 11. Bucks rush four. Tannehill to the sideline. Ferkser with the grab. Came back to get it, and that's a first down. So it looks like you guys are in a three by one set here. You're in the slot. I'm wondering if you can just take us through this route concept and specifically your role on the play. Yeah, so, I mean, here we're just, um, yeah, I got like a simple outbreaking route. Um, we're trying to get kind of the, the high, middle, and low aspect of the concept. And I know I'm that middle portion. It's third and long as well. So I'm kind of checking the sticks, making sure I'm past that. And um, try not to give out like which direction I'm going. So I'm keeping my stem vertical. And then I kind of see, um, um, yeah, where I get my break point, I'm able to kind of just bend it out and the corner kind of bites on the shallow route, the in-breaking route. And I'm able to kind of find that void right in that area and run. And um, uh, is that Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Does a great job kind of finding the void right there. Yeah, and it looks like zone coverage, uh, Anthony. Is that something that you read pre-snap? And would this combination work against either man or zone? Yeah, I mean, I kind of have to do a little bit something different, like depending on if I'm feeling match or man. But yeah, right here, I'm kind of feeling some zone coverage. I don't feel anyone eyeing me up just now as I'm kind of halfway through my route stem. So um, yeah, I kind of have a feeling that it's zone and I just kind of get to my spot in the route concept to get the correct spacing. Right. And you mentioned earlier about um, keeping yourself vertical in your stem. How important is it to stay square on a route like this? Yeah, I'm trying to kind of, um, yeah, not give any tells to the defense of yeah, whether it's turning my shoulders out or turning them in. So kind of just keeping straight, keeping vertical. Um, also kind of keeping the inside, like, vertical as much so I have as much space to work with on the sideline uh, right. yeah and I'm curious because uh, you got Adam Humphreys right there running inside he's got the the go route on this concept I'm curious if you're watching him as you run this route if you can feel him there next to you because you rub right off of his hip perfect timing is that something you guys just practice and you and you got it down, or is that something that you're conscious of while you're running your route? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's kind of just instincts. I mean, I mean, he kind of knows he's taking the top off, and I gotta trust that he's gonna be able to beat her with speed. And yeah, I think I was on the ball, so I guess I had to step ahead of him. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I kind of as soon as I turned to my right, I guess I felt him kind of just brush past me, and I knew that yeah, I just had to come off and bend it out to the sideline. Yeah, and this concept works to perfection. You know, you're pulling all the coverage away from you, and Ryan finally finds you there on the scramble. Uh, looks like you can see him rolling out, and you kind of slow down near the sideline. Did you notice that there? Yeah, I'm kind of looking. I um, mean, yeah, I kind of guess I feel that I'm open, and I see him kind of looking downfield towards me. And, um, yeah, I guess I had some just, like, field awareness to make sure I wasn't headed out of bounds too far, and he did a great job of kind of keeping the ball in bounds and give me space to kind of um, get some yards after the catch. Week 10, looks like 13 personnel. Big play action fake, kind of sucks in the defense. Um, is this the look you guys wanted against this, uh, looks like a man free kind of coverage? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, we were looking for um, man or like single high coverage probably. And, um, and yeah, we go with our big personnel, 13. We're trying to sell hard, play action, get people to bite, and um, yeah, and be able to kind of get matchups in the uh, right. uh, secondary. So did you know that was the coverage you were getting, or are you reading that on the fly? Um, I kind of had a read on the fly. Um, but yeah, I was kind of attacking 
the guy to my area, which is that cornerback out wide. I know I'm like the widest on the um, the formation right here. Um, I know John is kind of coming around to fake the sweep. So I'm trying to sell a little bit like I might attack his outside shoulder to kind of um, get that block. And as I do that, I'm able to kind of slip past him inside and kind of maintain my leverage on the inside shoulder because I know I got to get back um, across his face to the middle of the end zone. Right. You you uh, have that inside leverage right away. Is that that's because you attack his outside stem and get outside shoulder and get him kind of stepping that way? And then you have that inside leverage one from that point. You just have to create separation here. Yeah, I think that's a combination of the play call and kind of our tendencies with this formation and stuff. And I mean, he's kind of the outside. He's the edge set of the defense there. So he doesn't want to get beat um, outside. So if I'm able to push him and wind him as much as I can, that creates more space for me at the top of the route. So that was kind of my goal. And you mentioned the the sweep, you know, the potential of the jet sweep there to John Yu. Uh, you got the honey badger there. He starts to follow John Yu uh, on that motion. Are you able to see that from where you're lined up? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I wasn't able to see that, I guess, pre-snap. But, I mean, yeah, I guess I do maybe kind of see him in my, like, peripherals kind of sprinting across, like, to get back to that spot. So then I kind of have a feel that maybe it's more of, like, a man coverage from that point, too. But yeah, from when I'm in the stance like that, it's pretty hard to be able to see that. Um, right, you can't stuff. you can't get that tell so easily yeah. as like you if you were the quarterback or something. Yeah, it's easier if you're standing up or yeah. You fight through a pass interference here. Um, curious, are, are you thinking about that at all? I, I, your hands kind of go up like you're trying to draw the flag, but then ball's in the air, right? So <laughs> flag's not really that important anymore. Yeah, pretty much. I mean. Yeah, I kind of tried to, yeah, lean him a little bit out, and yeah, I kind of felt him grab my like shoulder pad, so I kind of like, yeah, I was able to kind of, he did kind of pull me off like my normal, uh, yeah, route um, stem. So yeah, but as I see the ball come in, I'm like, yeah, this is mine, or <laughs> too much. So that's kind of the goal once you see that, especially when you're that close to the end zone, you're trying to do anything you can to catch the ball there. <laughs> This is a big play in the Oakland game. A brief setup here. It's towards the end of the first half. As you can see on the clock, 19 seconds to play in the first half. You guys are back deep in your own territory, so if you can make something happen quick, you can get down and get a field goal. Right off the bat, are you guys expecting anything in particular from the defense that would try to take away that kind of a deep shot that would put you guys in closer to field goal range? Um, yeah, I mean, I think... Yeah, we know it's going to be a hard, um, yeah, hard to gain like a big play because that's what the defense is worried about. You know, they don't, yeah, they're trying to stop us from getting a field goal or a touchdown at this point and with only 19 seconds left. So, I mean, yeah, you're not really expecting it to be open down the field, but, um, but yeah, every play you're trying to be able to win and get into the best uh, spot to make a play, no matter what the situation. Yeah, and I want you to take me through your route here because you're going deep down the seam. Are you coached to stem outside and then angle back up the seam, or did you run it that way based on how the coverage unfolded? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I was trying to get to. Um, I was trying to attack the coverage pretty much, and um, yeah, right now, like I'm looking at the safety rotation, and um, uh, right now he's down, so I'm trying to attack him, but. Um, yeah, as he starts bailing out, I see that it's um, I can attack the middle of the field. So, yeah, I see that linebacker kind of um, traveling with me, and I feel like I'm not going to be able to cross his face. And um, so, yeah, I just try to keep it high on top of that backer. And Ryan makes a perfect throw to put it right over him, where he can't even look and um, yeah, pick up the ball flight. Yeah, and like you said, that's a great throw by Ryan. And I kind of want you to walk us through uh, your thoughts as the ball's approaching. You, you know that safety's closing in over the top. This, this is very much a trust throw from Ryan. Yeah, no, he's yeah, he's expecting me to get to that spot. And yeah, he puts it perfectly. So yeah, I'm not getting hit by that safety right away. I still have time to kind of tuck the ball and protect it because I know he's going to 
come in, try to attack that like he does there. Um, but yeah, he puts it far enough away from the safety and right over that backer just to make it kind of easy. Yeah, window. So. so if you had seen a different coverage here, could your route have taken you, kept taking you up towards the corner or was this always going to be back towards the middle? Yeah, it was always kind of just down the seam area. So kind of just wherever that void is. Gotcha. Huge play, set you guys up for a field goal, timeout right away. Can't, can't really do it any better than that. So with Chung out, Terrence Brooks comes in for this third down play. All right, you see all the people in New England up there, who's who? You gotta communicate with the line, you gotta get it blocked, and then you gotta make a tight throw quickly. Tannehill in zone, touchdown Tennessee. Berkser was open. Watch this, 86. What a route. Beats Brooks Berkser. That is an outstanding route for a tight end. So, wild card playoffs in New England. Nobody goes to New England and wins, right? That's what we heard in the media all week leading up to this game. So, big third down in the red zone. You guys were so insanely efficient in the red zone last year, especially after Ryan took over at quarterback. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. But so the Patriots have just subbed in Terrence Brooks at safety. Patrick Chung a little shaken up. He beat the guy, Brooks, who had just come in for Chung for the touchdown. And he's lined up right here. I'm wondering when you guys call this play, is this a designed shot at the replacement player that just came in to try to take advantage of this mismatch with you on him, or did you just get open and that's why Ryan found you there? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think it just happened that, yeah, I got open and I mean, yeah, we weren't exactly, yeah, I don't, I wasn't the like, yeah, the main, um, like the first progression or anything, it was just kind of however it plays out. and. Yeah, we had this play in the in the game plan and practiced it a bunch, so we had trust running it. And um, yeah, it just kind of happened that I was able to get open first, and um, yeah, Ryan was able to find me. Can, can you explain this bunch formation for us, Anthony, and how it affects your release? Yeah, so we did like a switch release here with um, Corey and me, so um, just kind of helps kind of give the defense a different look and change up and kind of, yeah, just kind of gives them a different feel and doesn't really know. So now my guy has to be off coverage and kind of doesn't know exactly which way I'm going, whether it's breaking out, breaking in or staying vertical. So just kind of gives um, that guy arcing some more space. Right. Can you, uh, can you take us through this route? It's pretty similar to the Kansas City touchdown, but you don't have the benefit of play action this time, and it's also a third down, so it's kind of a more obvious passing situation. But I'm curious how you know when you've gone outside enough and it's time to break back in. Is that based on the route depth, or are you watching his hips, and when you know you've got him flipped, that's when you cross his face, or combination? What are you looking at here? Yeah, pretty much a combination. I mean, yeah, there's a... I mean, yeah, we talk about landmarks and depths of where we got to get to, and um, we try to coach those as exact as we can be, so the timing is correct. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of also feeling the defender, where he is at, and the timing in my route. And yeah, I feel that it is like a cover zero look where they're blitzing a lot of guys. So, I mean, that makes me kind of, I can be a little bit quicker because I know Ryan doesn't have as much time. So once it was a feel and kind of try to sell that I was going outside to get him to overplay that outside, I knew that I could try to slip inside and create some separation. You hit him with like a basketball crossover there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I a lot know. of my background, so it does help <laughs> kind of what I use sometimes. Tannehill's pass. It is caught for the first down by the Harvard man, Berkser. All right, we got one last play to look at from later in this game. Kind of the game sealer. Well, before Logan got the pick six, this was sort of the game sealer at least. Uh, less than three minutes to play, another big third down. One point lead. This is a huge pressure situation. 
Can you talk us through the play call in the huddle and if you were kind of hoping to get any specific look and sort of the same question as before, was this, were you the primary read? Is this designed for you? No, it wasn't, yeah, I don't know if it was actually designed for me, but um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends where the leverage is and what the, um, what the coverage is and stuff and just what, how it plays out. And um, yeah, here I knew I had an outbreak and route and um, yeah, we see two men and my guy's playing inside leverage because he has that safety over the top and outside and um i have that outbreaking route so i mean right there i mean ryan might be banking on that just because he knows i'm going out my guy's sitting inside that i'll already have a step on him to that sideline pretty much so um yeah i just try to attack his leverage and um not get too wide so i can save some room for the sideline and um yeah, as soon as I plant my foot, try to keep it flat, and Ryan puts the ball right out there perfectly away from the DB, and I just had to make that catch and, yeah, get that first down. Ferksers, who they, who they double, Jim, watch. They're going to have two guys that come after him with five-man rush, but the double team gives up one thing, the sideline. Yeah, and the Patriots are in a, a two-high man look, and again, you're matched up with uh, Brooks there. Uh, when he gives you a free release like this, does it affect how you stem the route? Yeah, I mean, it makes it, yeah, it just makes me able to keep it a little more vertical rather than getting widened. So I'm going to kind of keep pressing that vertical stem, trying to not give him any pointers that I'm going out or anything, or still give him the illusion that I could cross his face or keep it high vertical. And yeah, when I see that I'm at my depth, correct depth and past the first down marker, I'm able to break it out and try to get a step ahead of him just because he's kind of waiting inside on me. My next question was going to be kind of asking you to talk through the details of a route like this. You kind of covered that a second ago, but I'm still curious because in such a high pressure situation like this, you know, this is like if you guys don't convert, Patriots have a chance to come down and kick a field goal for the lead. Ryan's throwing this ball before you even turn. Great anticipation from him. And at the end of the day, it almost looks like an easy pitch and catch. Is it? Is there more to it than uh, just executing that? I mean, I'm sure you guys rep, rep this all the time in practice, but it's it yeah. doesn't seem overly complex. Yeah, that, that um, I mean, yeah, this is, yeah, a throw that we practice a lot. And um, so, yeah, I think just developing that trust and confidence in practice and throughout the season just makes, yeah, just makes it look kind of, like it's easy, but I mean, yeah, we, yeah, Ryan and all the receivers and tight ends have kind of had this route and had this look before. So, I mean, it's kind of just treating it like it's practice rep and trying to kind of put all that noise aside and not, yeah, really think about, yeah, the stage that you're playing on. That's something that I like to try to focus on, just kind of stick to the training and everything that we practice. Yeah, and speaking of, Speaking of the stage, you actually led the Titans in receiving yards in this game. Uh, you know, just curious what it was like, you know, going back to the New England area uh, where you played your college ball and you lead the team in receiving yards and help them, uh, you know, on route to a huge playoff victory. Yeah, no, it was exciting to be back in that environment. Um, yeah, I know I personally had a lot of friends and family. My whole family's from the Northeast. Um, some college buddies and stuff were all able to make it, so... Yeah, I was excited to kind of have all these people that supported me throughout my life kind of be able to be at this game. And yeah, I was just fortunate that I was able to be in a position to make plays like this. No doubt. Yeah, I just got a couple questions for you, Anthony. Uh, you know, we, we touched earlier on um, how efficient, you know, this offense was in the red zone last season. Um, offensive coordinator Arthur Smith was actually, um, from, you know, what, we, what we've gathered, the installer of the red zone offense in 2018 uh, when Matt LaFleur was the offensive coordinator. And, of course, Art was your position coach. Um, how do you think that translated to the red zone success we saw in 2019 as Art, uh, as Art became the offensive coordinator? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, Art has a great background in that. Um, also, I think, yeah, my tight ends coach, Todd Downing, has a solid background in that. So, um, and I think all of that has to do with all the players, too. I've kind of been in the same same system, and we're able to kind of just, yeah, make minor adjustments and improvements in the little red zone stuff we had and just kind of work on just being more efficient and um, understanding the timing 
and understanding the defenses. And um, yeah, Vrabel does a great job as that um, to the offense, explaining kind of what the defensive role is in the red zone. So that gives the offense kind of some pointers on what the defense is trying to do so we can kind of exploit them as well. So I think, yeah, just a combination of the whole organization being able to kind of create the success that we have in the red zone. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, paid off on the field. Uh, you know, 2020 will be the first time in a long time uh, that Delaney Walker is not a part of this tight end room. Uh, you know, and despite spending, you know, his last, the last two years as a Titan battling injury, um, you know, his presence in that position room was a big one, you know, whether he was on the field or not. Uh, you know, it's pretty much down to yourself, uh, you know, Johnu Smith and, and Michael as well. And the three of you are on, you know, similar playing ground when it comes to experience. Um, you know, how do you guys sort of take on the leadership role that Delaney left behind? Yeah, it's going to be yeah a lot different not having Delaney in that room. I mean, he was just such a yeah focal point of the Titans and of the tight ends especially and just was a great role model for all of us in there but um yeah I think that's what leads to a lot of the success we've had in that room is just having guys like Delaney Walker and Arthur Smith and now Todd Downing come in there um yeah we just had great model great um role models to see like how it's got to be done what's the day in day out look like and just the yeah execution the attention to details and just um yeah, being able to kind of make plays. So, I mean, yeah, we've been with the, yeah, had the same similar room for a while. Um, so yeah, I think we're excited to kind of see how we can keep progressing. Yeah, no doubt about it. We all, we always hear about how tight, uh, tight of a group this is, right? It's extremely close locker room and it kind of shows with how far you guys were able to take this thing last year. But if you had to pick one guy that you were going to war with tomorrow, who, who would you pick and why? Um, Man, that's a tough one because, I mean, I, yeah, I almost want to pick the whole team. So it's going to be hard to narrow down to one guy. But, um, yeah, man, I think I picked Janu. I mean, I think one th personal thing that I had was, yeah, one of the hardest plays that I had to deal with was that drop in the Houston game when I got hit, interception. But I look back at that film and I see Janu sprinting down from – in the opposite sideline in the end zone and he's able to make the tackle and just kind of I don't know just someone that yeah he cares about the team more than himself and just kind of um yeah and he'd kind of do anything for us so yeah he's one guy that kind of I look up to as a guy that I'd want to go to battle with for sure and would trust him with anything and outside of him being a great guy I mean John who looks like the kind of guy I'd want to go to war with I mean you see that yard yeah. after catch ability it's it's not a bad choice oh yeah I would yeah. I yeah. would hide he, behind he him to be intimidating enough to <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> look when we hear uh, you know it's a tight-knit group that's great and all but there's always going to be something that annoys you so I'm curious if there's who's one teammate that makes a terrible travel partner a <laughs> terrible travel partner <laughs> I don't know, probably just the old linemen, just because if you're ever rooming with them, you know, you know they're snoring or yeah, <laughs> being loud in the room as a roommate. So yeah, I think that'd probably be the worst travel partner. <laughs> hey, you, you cut them a break. That's a lot of food to digest, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, Anthony, we've appreciated your time with this, man. Breaking down some great tape. You've been a great sport. Uh, you know, best of luck as you get ready. Congratulations on the new contract, by the way. Uh, of course, you know, back in Tennessee and, uh, you know, good luck as you get ready to, to get back into the swing of things here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. It's yeah, awesome to be a part of this. And yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate your time, Anthony. Thanks a lot. And uh, before we duck out, I just want to say the F Words pod crew says hi. And we've been on their show a couple of times. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Great guys, too. So Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, everyone. That'll do it for this episode of Tape with a Titan. We will be back soon. Stay tuned.